l'ensemble des personnes qui sont passées à, à ce pupitre. Je tiens à remercier les organisateurs de m'avoir euh, invité, euh, en particulier parce que j'ai eu, euh, grâce à vous, euh, l'occasion de, enfin, grâce aux organisateurs, l'occasion de revoir et de re rencontrer de nombreuses personnes avec lesquelles euh, je n'avais pas eu l'occasion de parler pendant d'assez nombre, nombreuses euh, années. Et puis, euh, le le petit speech de Damien m'a rappelé les années de collaboration avec Gilles, pendant lesquelles, évidemment, on a pas mal travaillé, mais aussi eu l'occasion d'avoir quelques activités sportives qui n'étaient pas tout à fait aussi répréhensibles que celles que tu as, que tu as rappelées. <rire> voilà. Bon, donc, évidemment... Je me souviens, j'ai parfois quelques trous, mais j'ai plaisir à me souvenir de ces années où nous avons travaillé en collaboration et où le dynamisme et la, comment, la ténacité de Gilles ont été très utiles vis-à-vis -vis de mon, ma, ma cyclotimie entre un optimisme délirant et un pessimisme totalement écrasant. Voilà. Donc, ça nous a permis quand même de, de, de faire des choses ensemble. Donc aujourd'hui, sorry, uh, uh, I will speak about uh, uh, bivariate coupling. So uh, the coupling of uh, two-dimensional uh, random variable via something I call a universal random generator. It's just a way to say a, that uh, this generator can generate many random variables. So this work is uh, a joint work with uh, Philippe Berthet. And <coughs> it comes from the fact that we wanted to, uh, to extend at at least the two dimensional case, some result we have of a convergence of the Uh, empirical Wasserstein distance, uh, donc some uh, central limit theorem in the one dimensional uh, case. And trying to do this, we observe that maybe it was not possible to get such results directly with uh, uh, the Wasserstein distance, the empirical Wasserstein distance, if we have no uh, information of, on the structure of the transport map uh, that uh, is underlying this problem of uh, Wasserstein distance. So, uh, sorry, I will... Uh, Propose so we decide to construct our own transport map, even they are not uh, optimal. So uh, I will present a representation of a probability distribution on a rectangle of R2. I mean rectangles, that is, we have a system of uh, coordinates and the rectangle are parallel to this uh, system of coordinates. Then from this representation, we get a generator of random variable on this rectangle, from which we proposed a transportation plan uh, between two uh, uh, bivariate uh, random uh, Uh, variable, try to get some uh, properties of this uh, transport. And then after I will give some uh, uh, example, not exactly of the actual transports, but on the empirical version given by an algorithm that tried to uh, compute this transport. So, Before beginning, I recall what we know on the well-known fact, of course, 
uh, about uh, generator and optimal coupling on R. We have a universal generator given by uh, uniform random variable on the unit interval. And if we take a random variable with a distribution function F, compute uh, the generalized inverse of F, F minus of U is a random variable with a distribution F, of course. And then from this, when we <coughs> take a reasonable cost, that means a convex function positive of the difference X minus Y, uh, null at, uh, at zero, uh, then we get a optimal transportation plan by taking F minus of U and G minus of the same U. That is the fact that uh, expectation of uh, C of the couple X, Y, here is the minimum among all the possible couple with marginal F and J. And of course, also when F and J are strictly increasing that then we have a map Y equal uh, G minus one of F of X, which is a, a, a optimal coupling between X and Y. When we uh, shift to RD with D uh, larger than one, then there is many uh, theoretical uh, results, but we have not too much uh, uh, explicit transports, optimal transports known uh, as a particular case of a more general uh, result. Uh, we know the optimal, uh, I will restrict now to the, uh, the cost of the square norm. So <clears throat> we know that for the Gaussian, uh, the optimal transport is uh, linear and given by uh, sorry by this uh, symmetric matrix. We also know that, uh, for instance, when you take two uh, random variables that are radial, that means that you take v uniform on the sphere and uh, two uh, random variables that give the radius row one and row two, then the optimal transport between the, these two variables is given by the optimal transport here of F1 to F2 and has this form. And the last thing I will uh, uh, consider is when uh, the fact that when X and Y have the same copula, then the uh, optimal transport is the product of the marginal optimal transport because the structure of uh, dependence of y, X and Y is the same. There is some other explicit transport maps, but uh, there is no general description, uh, precise description of transport in general. So <clears throat> I come to the, sorry. Uh, so I come to the representation of a probability distribution on a rectangle. So I recall what is the Kendall measure. You take a random variable X on a rectangle uh, with a positive uh, density and uh, assume that uh, the distribution function is uh, too differentiable. Then we consider the level curves of F given by the QF here and we can define the probability distribution of the random variable f of x, that is the Kendall measure of x, 
and is denoted here. Its distribution function is denoted here, kf of alpha, and its probability that f of x is less or equal to alpha. That is the, for instance, the probability of this area here. I take a random uniform variable on the square, take alpha equal 0.25, and we get uh, that this uh, probability is about 0.6. Uh, and here is the uh, function alpha minus alpha log alpha, that is the uh, candle uh, distribution uh, uh, of, uh, of the uniform random variable. Then, oh, sorry. <coughs> then we have some uh, property or remark to do uh, about the candle measure. First, this candle uh, measure uh, only depends on the copula of F. That means that if we have the same candle, uh, uh, if we have the same copula for uh, F and J, then we have uh, the same uh, candle measure, and this is due to the definition, of course, of a, what is a copula, and the fact that this couple of random variable has the same uh, distribution as Y. And second remark, the fact that when KF is here uh, C2, then uh, capital KF has a density denoted uh, small KF. And uh, an example is a case of uh, Archimedean copula that have this form with a, a convenient uh, phi that is here convex. And then uh, this formula uh, gives a uh, candle uh, measure associated to F. Yeah, then we have the Kendall measure, and now we are interested in the conditional distribution on the level curves Q uh, alpha. These level curves are, are described by a differential equation here, a natural differential equation with uh, orthogonal of the gradient of the distribution function f. Here there is some f. And on this curve, using this equation or the solution of this equation, we have, uh, uh, we can define the density, the conditional density of, uh, uh, of our uh, probability uh, on the uh, uh, curve QF of alpha and uh, uh, distribution function on this curve. Using this distribution function as a new parameter, we have a differential equation, uh, new, uh, another differential equation describing QF of alpha, which is given by XF alpha U here, this is QF alpha at the point T of U, where T of U is a, a U quantile of F alpha. For instance, uh, when uh, X is uniform, we know uh, that uh, this, the level curve of hyperboles, this is the candle measure density this is the natural parameter of this hyperbole, uh, parameterization of this hyperbole, the endpoint of the uh, level curve, the densities, or and the distribution function on the level curve, and here the uh, equation, the the parameterization uh, given by uh, uh, on zero one 
uh, given by F alpha. Sorry. Okay, so from this uh, remark, we can define uh, a generator. That means that if we consider a random variable uniform on uh, the square uh, uh, is a unit square, then what I call JF of Z, which is XF at the, quanti the Z1 quantile of KF and Z2 here, we obtain, uh, which is also uh, is expressed uh, uh, in this formula, we obtain a random variable that has a distribution F. This is easy to prove. Uh, we just compute the gradient of this uh, transformation in the orthogonal system uh, given here, gradient F and orthogonal of the gradient F. And we see that we have the expected likelihood ratio to have the uh, distribution F. So uh, this gives a generator of a given random variable with a distribution F. And as an example, again, the same, we have a very simple uh, way to uh, uh, generate a random uniform on the square with a random uniform on the square. <laughs> yeah. So from this, just a, a second, just to say that in uh, uh, this uh, generator, we tried to mimic something in the, uh, in the one diamond, given by the one uh, dimensional case. That means that we can define a, as a Z quantile of F, a point that satisfied, uh, the point that, uh, that satisfied the fact that the, this point is XF of, uh, no, the point XF of uh, KF uh, Z1, Z2, which is on the level curve KF minus one of Z1. And, Reversely, that we can define the F rank point of X in the rectangle as the points Z1, Z2, such that we have this uh, formula. And we have the fact that GF minus one of X has distribution U uniform on V1 square. That means that we have something like the formula in uh, one in the one dimensional case, Fx is uniform on the unit interval. Of course, as we have uh, defined uh, our generator, we, by uh, composition, we can define a transport map uh, using uh, the fact that we take X, uh, by the inverse of JF, uh, we return to the unit square, then applying JJ, we obtain a random variable uh, with, uh, with the same uh, uh, distribution function as uh, Y. So this to FJ of X is uh, a transport map between F and J here, a coupling of uh, X and Y. This is not difficult to uh, verify. So if we, but uh, if we put alpha uh, equal KF minus uh, of Z1 as before, then we, uh, and beta of alpha, uh, Kj minus one of uh, Kf of alpha, then the transport is simply to take a point on the uh, level curve alpha of f 
to a, a point of a level curve beta of alpha uh, for j and given by the fact that the, we have the same z2 for the two uh, the two points the, the points the initial points and the image image point okay so as i said i will try to give some uh, uh, simple property of this transport. Uh, first, a uh, first test just uh, to see uh, if uh, our idea is not too uh, stupid. So uh, we know that uh, the uh, optimal transport uh, 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 the optimal transport uh, give, uh, for uh, LP cost here. Well, it's, if I, it's sufficient to take P equal to, but uh, we know that uh, if X and Y share the same copula, then the optimal transport is a marginal, the product of optimal uh, marginal transport. And we verify here that this is the case for uh, tau FJ. It coincides with this optimal transport just by verifying that uh, the differential equation satisfied by XJ is the same as the differential equation satisfied by the image, image by the marginal, the product of the marginal uh, transports. And uh, that in the compact case, for instance, it starts from the set, same point. So it's not completely uh, uh, full to uh, hope that this transport have some good properties. So I still put alpha equal kf minus one of z1. Then uh, first uh, we, we oh. Ah oui, c'est dommage, mais <laughs> bon, je me suis pas assez entraîné. Uh, so. Tau FG, uh, first, we note that Tau FG uh, optimally transport the uh, Kendall measure of F to the Kendall measure of J because uh, it has a good for. Ah, décidément, j'insiste. Bon, je suis désolé. Ouais. Ah. Ah. Okay, this is how we say. Voila, ça y est. Hein? So uh, we know that uh, two FJ of the uh, level curves is a level curves, but at beta of alpha with uh, the optimal transport. But we also know that uh, uh, two FJ optimally transport the uh, distribution F alpha to the distribution G beta from the curve uh, alpha to the curve uh, beta of alpha for j and this follows from a, a general a more general proposition and just by uh, noticing that uh, the two uh, partial derivative of f of course are positive the general proposition just to say that if we consider uh, smooth curves in RDE with uh, uh, the fact that uh, they are uh, parameterized uh, on D1 and that the derivative have the same sign, the two derivative of the two curves have the same sign, then the optimal transport from the uniform on this, on the first curve is to the uniform of the second curve is just as in air to take the same, the same random variable u and the proof is just to mimic what happens in uh, R, 
this for uh, coordinate wise uh, cost here with uh, good properties. Uh, this uh, integral uh, property uh, formula is valid. And the last thing we we know is that the again <laughs> the that two FJ if we consider to fix z2 and we consider the curve alpha then gives alpha, uh, xf of alpha z2 uh, to fg restrict to uh, this curve the z2 curve i would say is the optimal transport of kf to kj on this curve on the the curve xj uh, z2 and then that we have some uh, of course, this is just due to the transport, but and also uh, to the the fact that uh, these area SF, which are the uh, area such that we have we are under some level, and the uh, Z two quantile is less than uh, zeta, have. Uh, simple formula for the probability this is a product of zeta and kf of a and that uh, to fg of the f area uh, is the j area but at the point uh, beta of a uh, this is shown for instance on these uh, plots so here we take the uniform case it's the one where we can see something and we and we have here a uh, 10 value of alpha equispace 10 value of alpha 10 uh, value of z2 here so here alpha is equispace and here we have, you have the curve z2 equispace 2 and the area, the probability of uh, this small area are, the are given by the variation of Kf uh, multiplied by uh, the variation of Z2, its uh, product. And here the same plot, but not with the coordinate alpha and Z2, but Z1 and Z2. And here you have a tessellation of. Uh, uh, the the square where all this small uh, area have the same probability here one percent. So <laughs> I'm nothing to do more on the mathematical point of view, but we are, we are, we will try to see what happens for this uh, tra with this transport. First, just. Uh, to see that uh, our algorithm on the uh, empirical version uh, for the empirical version of the transport is not uh, very efficient. There is uh, some uh, uh, improving in the computation to do, but if we take a very large sample here, uh, 500,000, and we look at, uh, and we look at the estimation of the curves of the 10 by 10 curves and I mentioned previously here we have this result which is uh, not too bad the, the quadratic error is about uh, 10 um, to the minus 5 but with with some defects on the, the extreme the last uh, curve here and with a crossing that uh, should not happen. But it's a sort of benchmark for, uh, for to see the precision of uh, the result we have. So <clears throat> uh, just to see uh, how it works, we, we uh, take a perturbation of as the transport, we will look at the transport 
of uh, uh, the unit the uniform uh, uh, distribution on the unit square to a perturbation of this uh, uniform on a square here of size uh, one third, uh, with, uh, which begins here at the center of the of the square, and where we put this uh, um, the product of this uh, marginal uh, distribution. Of course, we scale to get a probability distribution. And this is here a large uh, sample of this, uh, prob this probability distribution, uniform and here uh, product. This is not exactly uh, C2, but almost. And <coughs> we get the following. That means that, uh, in fact, there is only a strip uh, here are the the Kendall curves, the curves I I use uh, uh, previously, and in fact uh, the transport only affect a strip on the on the square because uh, elsewhere we have the identity. We are sure we have the identity. And this is the uh, level curve for the uniform, of course, and here for the uniform per tube on the square here. And you have the movement of the this uh, level, this candle or level, these curves from here to here. Uh, maybe here there is a superposition of the two system of curves. Uh, for say, uh, this time uh, 35, 33 to uh, times 33 curves. And here you have the, I don't know if it's clear, but you, you have the transport map, but which is restricted to the uh, area that uh, actually uh, is affected by the transport. It's elsewhere, the transport is uh, just the identity. And here you have the square and you see that, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the moving by the transport is not only on the square, but also a bit, uh, there is some small trans movement uh, all around the, the, uh, the square. Of course, <clears throat> you notice that this is uh, strongly dependent on the choice of the coordinate system. And uh, we, uh, we have, if we consider the, the square, here we have, in fact, four uh, interesting uh, coordinate system given here by the three corner. The, this one, the uh, use, uh, use uh, <coughs> no, <coughs> bon. uh, and uh, here is, so we have here the deformation given by the transport I mentioned previously. And here is the same uh, algorithm uh, of transport applied to the point of view of uh, the, uh, this system coordinates. So here the uh, curves are given, the curves are given by a system, this system. And here are the two strips that are affected. And in fact, we are not, because there is not this, the, the curve are not the same, the, the points are not in the same number exactly. So we are not able to say here, the transports are more or less of the same kind, but we are not able to say if they are exactly the same or not 
on this empirical uh, version. But we see that the costs are numerically uh, the same, that are, of course, uh, uh, less than the, the cost reduced to the, to the square itself. Then, uh, ah, and here is a picture, a zoom picture of uh, the transport uh, uh, restricted to the square itself. Yes, it's not, well, it's about the same thing, but it's not so clear. Uh, then, of course, we test our transport on the Gaussian. It has nothing to do uh, with uh, a linear transport a priori, but if we uh, compute it for uh, uh, two standard, a standard Gaussian and uh, uh, a couple of standard Gaussian uh, uh, 0.5 correlated, then we have this transport map that zoom here near zero uh, by this transport. I say transport, that means here, I forgot to tell this, that here you have the beginning, the, the point uh, to start, and here is the image of this point and the scene a pink uh, line is the, the distance of transport station. So you have the transport map here. And if you compute the, the cost, the empirical cost is uh, as this value and is not far from the optimal cost given by the, by the, by the linear, uh, Transform. So <clears throat> here another Gaussian, but uh, not uh, uh, standard. And you, you have the curves here, the superposition of the initial curves and the image curves. Here the transports, and you have this cost. All this cost is more or less uh, close to the optimal cost. Then less than 10%. And if you uh, change the system of coordinate by rotation, any rotation here, you have uh, something which is uh, comparable. But you can also uh, apply this to, uh, <laughs> to uh, something different of a rectangle or air two. For instance, here you have the the curves uh, associated to the uh, uniform uh, random variable on uh, uh, random measure on a disk center at the center of the square and with radius one, one uh, over two, one half. Well, there is some, uh, of course, here numerical problem, but it's not too bad. And you can, for instance, transport the uniform on the square to the uniform on the disk. I have no uh, idea of what is the uh, optimal transport. What is the value of the optimal transport? You can also, on this uh, disk, transport the radial, no, the uniform here to the radial, no, this is the radial, the curve of the radial uniform. That means that you choose your radius with a uniform random variable uh, to the uniform and you have this transport. And of course, as it's radial, you can compute the, the cost, the optimal cost and uh, our transport is very close here, is close to the uh, optimal transport. And uh, uh, to finish, another uh, radial uh, example with a radius uh, exponent 
a random exponential uh, with parameter one or exponential with parameter one third. That gives this transport that is, of course, uh, radial more or less, and uh, the cost is very close to the optimal cost. So I conclude um, this image. Okay. Merci beaucoup. Uh, are there some questions?